All right, this lecture is going to be a short introduction to the Unix sed command. So like most of the Unix commands we've covered, uh, you know, we're basically just giving an introduction to them so they make you aware of them. In the context of uh, high-performance computing, a lot of these are kind of only utilities we will use for very short kind of incremental things, and so uh, we don't know, need to know the full power. And this is especially true of sed here. Sed is much more powerful than... Uh, this this lecture is going to just you know do justice for it. So, just wanted to make you aware of, of some of the uh, utility of, of SED. Uh, so SED performs non-interaction non-interactive options on a data stream. So a data stream could be a file or it could be uh, piped in from the standard in. And uh, basically, it's text, and you could think of it basically as a as an, a parser for text, and that it can you know use pattern matching regular expressions or otherwise to uh, perform operations on text uh, in a non-interactive way, find and replace or whatever. Uh, the syntax will be familiar to Vim users uh, and uh, you know, said uses, uh, this should be uses, uh, it should be uses uh, instructions to act on text. So if you look at a said command line, we'll you know, start with the command itself said, followed by an address. Uh, if an address not given, it'll search the whole file uh, and then some action to, to perform on it. And so in this case, uh, we would search uh, lines one to the end of the file and then uh, looking for lines that begin uh, with foo and then we'd replace it with bar and the G just like in Vim, would replace globally all instances, not just the first line, the first instance in a line. Okay. So, uh, you know, here's a lot of the commands we can insert and um, uh, append and change text. We can delete lines. Uh, we can print lines to standard output. We can quit after reading a line up to an address. Uh, and, you know, the, then the search and replace commands and otherwise. So I'll just let you take a look at this for reference. Uh, here's a couple examples of things you might do. You know, you can delete lines one to four, or quit. You know, after reading ten lines and et cetera. I'll let you use this as reference. I'm going to go to the command terminal in one second and give you a couple examples. Uh, so you know, this basically talks about uh, line addressing here. So um, you know, if we wanted to simply read the first three lines and quit, uh, which would replicate the functionality of head dash n three. We could use this command here. Of course, you know it's not a lot of utility in doing that because you have the, the head command. Um, here you could um, print lines nine through eleven with this uh, addressing. Now, this when you use the p command, it, it kind of has a somewhat odd feed fu function in that it pr would print nines nine through eleven followed by the entire uh, output of the file. So we use the dash n option to suppress that kind of non-standard output, or the, you know, the standard output, such that it only prints lines 9 through 11. Uh, and then we can negate any action with the uh, negation operator. So, you know, in this case, uh, we're going to address lines 3 to the end of the file, uh, but then we're going to only print lines 1 and 2 because we're going to negate the operation. And uh, so here are a couple of set options that we use. So let's go look at a couple examples uh, in the terminal. So uh, here we have, you know, this, the same uh, LaTeX file we've been kind of playing with for a couple of lectures now. So uh, if we wanted to, say, simply, you know, print the first few lines of the file, uh, we could uh, do so like this. So that would replicate basically the head functionality. Um, we could also, another way to do that would be, you know, using the dash n and then addressing, say, lines 1 to 5 with the print. Uh, the um, basic commands. Oh, not, it's uh, said, not set. There we go. So we get the same functionality there. So uh, you know that's not tremendously useful because we have the head command. So let's let's take a look at something else we might do uh, with sed. So I have a file here. 
that's uh, myfile.txt. And in there, um, it's basically the beginnings of a, of a bash script in that I have an input that's set equal to input one. Uh, and then I'm going to echo, uh, and the bash uh, expr is an integer uh, addition program. So I'm going to echo the output of input one, the variable, uh, plus one. Of course, input one is right now set to a string, uh, namely the lowercase input one. Um, so this wouldn't actually add anything. We need to give string a value uh, before we can actually do that. So um, we could use sed to do this. We will uh, we'll, we'll say sed. Uh, we're not going to address any. We're not going to give it any address uh, because we're just going to read the whole file. So we'll just say sed search for input one and replace it with a number. So we'll say six. Uh, in my file. Okay, and if we do that, you see that input one, the lowercase input one, was replaced with six. So now the variable uppercase input one has has an actual value. And if we then took this and outputted or piped it into uh, a bash, an, a non-interactive bash uh, session, then it would also, uh, you know, evaluate expr, and and we should get the result would be seven. And there you see it is. So the nice thing about this is it, it kind of gives a nice automated way to rapidly make changes uh, to, you know, to the output of a file. And of course we could wrap this in a loop uh, in, in a bash script or something and, and you know, produce a, a multitude of answers if we'd like to. Um, we can also have multiple commands. So if we just edit uh, my file real quickly uh, we'll change input one to input two there, and then we'll change this here to input two. Um, then change our sed line a little bit by using the dash e op, uh, option. What di dash e allows a multiple of commands. So here we're going to look for input two and replace it with, uh, say, ten. Okay, and then uh, run my file dot text. I'll, I'll show you what the output of that is before we uh, pipe it into a bash session. But you see now that the two variables have both been assigned a value of nine and ten, and uh, then we could pipe this into bash, and the answer should be nineteen, of course, and it is. So we could change this to uh, you know something else, and get a different answer. So. This is by no means an exhaustive tutorial of SED. It, it can do much more. Uh, the reason I'm keeping it short is that you've all been learning Python, and uh, you know, you know, it, it's good to know about SED. But basically, anything you can do in SED, you can do in Python, and uh, not necessarily quicker or better or anything like that. But just to prevent you from having to learn a whole bunch of new programming languages, essentially, I'm going to kind of minimize. Uh, the, the amount of work we do in SED, and, and we'll reserve the more complicated tasks to, to Python. So, uh, uh, well, you know, which we'll be talking about real soon about how to script uh, the operating system within Python. Anyway, this was a short tutorial on SED.